Hi guys. Well, it is quickly turning into a beautiful Sunday here in the end times. Don't believe it. A lovely fall day here in the end times at Bugs in a Jar Farm. That would be Sunday, October 10th, 2021. And we're having a little bit of a Doomer meetup starting here soon. So, uh, got a lot on my plate. So, now, Sunday being the Sunday sermon, so maybe here at Humpty Dumpty Tribe, maybe old Hambone can start back to his uh, Sunday sermons. You know, that little eco pussy over there at Collapse Chronicles was just looking for a Sunday sermon, and uh, it was too chicken shit to run this one. Uh, but you might want to go over there. He did have a pretty good one from Dr. Doom, Eric Pianca. But this one, I want to send a big thank you out to one of our favorite Doomer chicks here on uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I am proud to have Deb Ozarko uh, in the tribe. Deb, uh, Deb is, you know, I closed out Humpty Dumpty Tribe last year. Uh, Deb Ozarko still has, in my opinion, the single best essay ever written about Corona Panic. Uh, Deb Ozarko understands, and uh, <laughs> yeah, Deb Ozarko is certainly one of these right wing, Trump tarred conspiracy wackos, uh huh. But anyway, uh, Deb has found another essay about Corona Panic that never mentions the C word. And this is from a fellow, I've actually had a couple of uh, sermons from him. A fellow named Charles Eisenstein. A uh, great guy, if you're not familiar with Charles Eisenstein, uh, he has, uh, <clears throat> he's all over the place. Look him up, E-I-S-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. -E -E and his brand new uh, essay apparently was came out yesterday on his website called, I sent, I guess his website is just Charles Eisenstein. Anyway, I am going to put the link on here. You can read this sermon yourself and go on his website and find a lot of other sermons he has written. <clears throat> but anyway, today, what is on Charles's mind is that which shall not be named, and we all know what that is, here on YouTube, <laughs> yes, and he's titling this one, The Rehearsal is Over. Take it away, Charles Eisenstein, hallelujah. We'll send this out to my buddy Mark J in West Bumblefuck, uh, New Mexico. Mark, this one's from Deb Ozarko to Mark J, and I will just be the conduit. Take it away, Charles. <clears throat> A friend wrote me about her dilemma. She owns a company employing hundreds of people and is a staunch critic of that which shall not be named. She said she has been trying to fly under the radar until sanity is restored, but with looming mandates for large employers, the radar will soon turn on her. What will she do? I will share with you the inner thoughts that her note provoked in me. <clears throat> A return to sanity? Sanity will not be restored to us by others. We are the ones that must restore it. We cannot wait for others to be brave on our behalf. We are here in this initiatory moment to choose who we are. The choice of whether to capitulate 
or to act is a declaration. Who am I to be? What is the world to be? Am I serious enough about my vision for the world to risk my security for it? That is not a challenge meant to goad myself into action. It is simply true. Through my choice, I will know myself as I am. I will become as I choose. The rehearsal is over. Many people trust the authorities and willingly comply with their rules. They face no dilemma, no initiatory moment, no self-defining, world-creating choice point. Not yet. But as the authoritized narratives devolve into absurdity, and their rules devolve into oppression, more and more of us face this choice. To live your truth out loud, blah, or to live by a lie, controlling yourself with secret protest. To do what you know is right, or to cave in to the pressure consoling yourself with words you don't believe. I had no choice. <clears throat> yes, for many of us, it has come to such a choice. The rehearsal is over. Maybe I think Maybe now is not the time to be brave. Maybe now is not the time to speak out. I'll wait until it is a little safer. Hmm. But it will never be safe to be brave. Never. If not now, when? If not I, who? Shall I wait for others to do what I dare not do? We are ready. We have been preparing and being prepared for a long time. The rehearsal is over. The message is not act now. <clears throat> do not accept pressure coercion, bribes, or threats. Don't let me or anyone else tell you what to do or when to do it. We are fighting for the end of the time of dictating each other's choices, thinking, I know better than you what you should be doing. I trust you to know the right choice. Being trusted is an invitation to be trustworthy. Trusting you to be brave, you become brave, just as I become brave when people see me as brave. Bravery is not a personal achievement. It is a community function. It is a contagion. It is a mutual awakening. Bravery means acting when you know it is time to act. It is not the convenient time. It is simply the time. It is the moment of enough. It is the moment of it is time to do something about it. It is the moment of truth over consequences. In that moment, you act not because it is brave, but because it is necessary. You recognize that the moment has come. Why now? Because it is time. No other reason is needed. Bravery means doing 
what is yours to do when it is time to do it. Denying that knowing locks your heart in a box. Life becomes a chore. Despair descends like a fog, turning everything gray. Hope withers, leaving behind the dry, empty husk called wishful thinking, and you face the dread of living the rest of your life knowing, I did not do what I was here to do when the moment came and it counted. The rehearsal is over. <clears throat> if I am not brave, what reasons have I to hope others will be? Courage and cowardice both are contagious. My choice establishes a principle of human nature. It declares not only who I am, but what a human being is and what the world shall be. Each choice is therefore a prayer. Our choices scaffold divine creation. That is why synchronicity so often congeals around bravery. Synchronicity is the snapping of the laws of probability as reality shifts to align with brave choices. Seeing that creative power, one knows the despair, was based on false premises. The ego's cautious logic is reversed. The ego says, give me a guarantee that it will work and I'll, and I'll be okay, then I'll do it. The ego says, promise me that enough other people will resist and then I will resist too. Prove to me that it won't be in vain. Guarantee me that others will join in. God says, show me that you want a more beautiful world enough to actually risk something with no guarantee, then you will see results beyond all reckoning. Thank you, God. It is, uh, is your time for choosing here? You will recognize when it is. No one can escape that feeling of recognition when the moment comes. If you have read this far, that time is close. You know exactly what I am talking about. The rehearsal is over. Uh, <laughs> Amen, uh, Brother Charles. Amen, Sister, uh, Sister Deb. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, we shall see whether the rehearsal is over as the screws and the noose tighten about anyone uh, out there saying enough of this bullshit. Enough of this bullshit. You know, we've just got to take a stand and say, this is fucking bullshit. Enough of it. Anyway, <laughs> that sure felt good. Uh, amen, Brother Charles. That out of the way, uh, uh, I've got to wind up uh, this Sunday sermon and take my little wiggle worm dog out to pee and uh, go harvest. I still don't think this is going to be my last tomato harvest. We're going to head out and grab some more tomatoes and make some salsa for the end times. I highly suggest you get out there and grab all the salsa for the end times while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. Did you survive that? <laughs>